Hey guys, it's Tarko Cyclone FPV, and today I'm actually going to be working on what you see right here, which is the X90 Plus. Uh, this is an upgraded version that a customer has purchased for me. This was mine. Uh, I got to use it maybe one time, uh, maybe two times max. I mean, I didn't get to use it that much, I guess, because uh, I ended up doing the QX7 uh, to test it out, and so this is what we ended up with. Um, uh, is that I ended up getting this one and just never using it much. So I ended up putting it for sale and the guy got a really good deal on it. And now I'm gonna, sh I told him I would update it for him uh, cause it's been so long since I've used it and I've wiped the card. And so I'm gonna figure I put a video together, a real quick video on how to do that. Uh, so that may help you. So let's go ahead and do this right here. And um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get started. Now I'm not gonna get into the installing um, uh, OpenTX and all that because uh, I have videos already on that. So I'm just gonna kind of jump into this one. So I've already got, now I've got this Vifly uh, sitting right here in the box so that I can keep the USB cord off the um, off from being pressed too hard on the table. So as you guys know already, we're going to go ahead and start this up by taking our trims uh, and pushing them in towards each other and then turning on the power, right? And then letting everything go. And we see we have an old bootloader and, and the firmware and everything here is going to be pretty, pretty dated. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop the uh, USB on. And what that's going to do is that's going to automatically get us onto the screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and give us a computer screen here to look at uh, and we will do it like this okay so um, we have everything loaded now and uh, it's time to go ahead and open uh, open TX so I'm gonna go ahead and open that real quick and we're gonna have a little bit of work to do on this one so just kind of hang in there um, I want to make sure I don't jump ahead too far but what I am gonna do is okay so once you have open TX loaded and if you don't know how to do the open TX part check out the I've got a section on um, YouTube for that uh, so just look up any of the QX7s or anything I think we discussed it there but all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to settings and we're gonna pick a radio profile and the radio profile is gonna be the X9D plus but if you do not have one set I will make one here just for uh, and we'll make it for the customer right so we're gonna go to radio uh, radio profiles and we will say uh, add a radio profile okay and in that case let's go ahead and just call this um, the uh, X9D uh, plus and then we're just gonna name it customer this way when I do customer stuff I know to do it. Okay, so um, For the we are doing a no no heli uh, and I guess we can do There's a couple things here that we can do we can do, do the new font you can do the Lewis scripts uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that's really necessary on this one I'm not gonna be doing anything long range right now. So I may just leave it like this for the time being um, and then from there we can do another video just so that we're not delayed. Okay, so we do have to have our SD card uh, data, right? I mean, it's important that we have um, our SD card contents, and so we're going to have to go ahead and select a folder for that. Oops, not a backup, sorry. Go ahead and click the select folder, and uh, I am going to make a, uh, let's see, I'll put it in my downloads, and I will call it, uh, let me do a new folder, let me call it, um, I think I'm just going to call it transmitters, so that I can keep track of all this, because I keep making new ones. And then from there, I'm just going to call this uh, new folder uh, Q, I'm sorry, X9DP-Customer. Uh, so everything's going to go in here, right? If I could type. Okay, so we're going to go to the customer section. I'm going to put that in. And then from here, I'm going to make a folder called SD card. Okay, that's it. So for right now, that's the plan. Now, uh, we're, so we're going to say select folder there. And then on backup, I'm going to go ahead and tell it on the downloads to go to download transmitters customer SD card and then here I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call it backup okay so there's that right uh, and then we're going to say select folder uh, did I select that yeah okay so I'm running mode 2 we know this and I run TAER setup so I'm going to set that you guys do whatever you like to do uh, and we will do the uh, we will offer both of these here for the append the version number on the file name and then uh, let's see on application settings uh, I think we're going to leave everything for the customer wise. I think we're going to leave it like this and I'm going to select the automatic backup folder to be my backup folder as well. So let's just go to transmitters, customer, and then backup. Okay. And we're going to select that folder. I'm not changing any splash screens. So everything here is going to be good. Uh, I do not use any of the nightly releases for testing and I would recommend that you don't right now. And then the nightly builds that are unstable. So I'm selecting this for this. And again, this is just for my customer settings here. Uh, and then we're going to click OK over here, make sure everything looks good. And then once it's done, we're going to go ahead and click. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and click that too to prompt me for backing up. All right, so here we go. We're going to click OK. Now, 
Uh, first thing I want to do, or the next thing I want to do, is I want to go ahead and I want to download, check for the downloads, and we are going to download the, uh, this is the firmware, right, that would match this setting. So you see how this says OpenTX X90 Plus, no heli, and then it gives me the font, right? So check this out. So when you go to settings, and you go to radio profiles, and I'm in my customer profile, sorry, and I should go to uh, settings right here. You see how we did no heli and S, S, uh, what is that? The uh, SQT5 font. It's just a new font for this. Um, and uh, so anyways, uh, I, I think it just gives it a more square look. I have no idea. I think that's what I remember out of it. It's been a while since I loaded this font. Um, but in either case, so these two options are what you will see when you click the download. The firmware is now labeled with these options included. Again, the, the, uh, um, the font and the uh, no heli. So we're just doing drones here, and so we're gonna leave it as no heli. Uh, so we're gonna, uh, let's see, we're gonna download the firmware. And in that, we wanna go ahead and go to our downloads, transmitters, customer. And this is where it gets tricky because you need to put your SD card contents, but since we don't have that yet, we're just gonna leave our firmware in a folder here called uh, firmware. All right, now do not get mistaken between this folder if I can type again, hold on. Okay, all right. This is just gonna be for us where we download. So we're gonna do 2.2.4 and we're gonna click save. And do I wanna write it to the radio now? Sure, I'll say okay, yes. And it's gonna tell me where I'm pulling it from. And uh, here's everything that we need. And that's pretty much, the standard here is gonna be just fine. So go ahead and uh, click write to TX. Okay. All right, so it has been written to the radio, but we're not done yet. Okay, so we're gonna click OK, click Close. Now, I do wanna download the SD card content, so we're gonna click Download SD card contents. And so we have all these here, the X9. Uh, so let's look at, uh, let's look at which one we're gonna to wanna to get here. The newest one we're gonna get will be this one right here. Okay, so we're gonna click on that, and it's gonna download. And I guess if you have to sit here and wait, just say um, Show in Folder. And it's going to be in your downloads folder right here. Now, you're going to want to move this, and I'm going to show you how to do it, right, in just a little bit. But while that's going on, i thought I got to clean up a lot of stuff here. So let me see. Uh, I need to move a lot of my thing. I'll do this later. Okay. So while that's going on, and it is downloading, and we are about halfway done, I'm going to go get my coffee real quick, and we continue. Uh, nothing like a nice cold or hot coffee or whatever. All right, so here we go. Our download's pretty much done. And um, so let's go to our downloads folder. And we are waiting for our file here, which is right here. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take that and just drag it over to transmitters. And go to transmitters and then just drag it over to your folder. And I guess I could copy and cut and all that. I don't feel like it. All right, now we want to extract this, right? So go ahead and extract all. And we want to show the files when we're done, so just click Extract. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I want to, um, one of the things, sorry, let me just, one of the things that's important to me is to make sure that I have a backup of everything that I'm doing, right? So I want to extract the file so that I have the files to work with. And then we're going to remove a lot of the stuff that we don't need from there. But then more importantly than that, I want to also save that zip file because I know that that zip file contents matches the firmware that I've got. So unless I'm going to update the firmware again, that card contents and that firmware should go together perfectly, right, without any problems, okay? So that's what we're going to work on right now is I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's get back to that screen. And where is my, oops, right here, right here, and there, okay? So let's, we're almost done uh, opening that up. And uh, we shall see. Now, in the meantime, if you want, you can also go to, um, I'm getting ready, as you can see here, I'm getting ready to do a, um, a video on the Furious FPV True D module. Uh, but one thing that we can do is we can go to FR, uh, FrySky's website, and one thing I want to show you here will be the firmware that is available for this radio as well, which is not part of the um, software that we're downloading right now, right? So if we go to support, or download, I guess we go to download, sorry. Let's go to download, and then we're going to go to our transmitter, and we're going to look, and let's see... Uh, let me find a little boy. I need to zoom out of this thing. This thing is way too zoomed in, but I don't feel like messing with it. Okay, so let's go to X90 Plus, right? And then here's where you're going to see the firmware, right? So you have XJT firmware, 
which is the internal here for the, um, it'll do D8 and D16 as well. But you need to read these firmwares here. So we have SD card contents, and this is kind of what we're downloading right now. But this most recent one is 2018, and we are actually, and this is kind of, kind of really obsolete at this point. Um, uh, let me see, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at all this. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't care all these things. What I care about now is we have firmware for the XJT and we want to look at this first, okay? So you have to read this and make sure you take your time to read it. So it's talking about how it's improved uh, certain features of the, of the board inside this and uh, it's telling you your production dates are, blah, blah, blah. And here, uh, it's going to let you know if you need to uh, change this or not. And I don't believe on this radio, I think this radio is definitely out before that, but if you're not sure about it, just go ahead and do it. Now, it will tell you here if you're using LBT mode, if you're using EU mode, uh, then these for US versions are not going to be necessary, but you have to read your update uh, information, okay? Because some of these will be for both. Now, if we go to our firmware, uh, we can see that the most recent firmware, or the, the newest firmware, is going to be uh, the release out of 2.2.2, and this is not what we're going to be messing with right now. So in this case, Everything that we've got here is, uh, we could pass on it right now. The only thing I would wonder is uh, for the XJT, I'd have to go back and read here to see if, uh, let me see. If you'd like to use the, uh, no, we don't need all that because we're not gonna be using this receiver or anything like this here. So that's not gonna be an issue. All right, so here's what you will do though when you're checking for firmware, like for your other products, right? Uh, but for us, we're not gonna need that right now. So let's go back to our SD card. It has been um, extracted. So if you go to the uh, customer here, now you see the original contents, which is as much I want you to save this one, okay? This is good to keep on hand. So let's go to this card here, and we're going to, one thing I do want to show you is, and I've done this before, if you right click on this folder once it's been extracted, and you go to properties, it's going to be about 100, let's say about 138 max, right? Something to that effect. Um, most of that is going to be in the sounds folder. So if you're not planning on doing this in Czech, or uh, in Spanish, or French, or Italian, or uh, what have you, uh, then you can go ahead and easily just click on each folder and hold your control key down on your keyboard and just get rid of all the languages you don't intend to use. And watch what happens when you do that. Um, it's going to be, it's a huge difference. I do want to uh, get to my desktop here uh, and make sure that, um, uh, I'm going to click OK now because we're going to be done here. So make sure that, uh, just get rid of these. Now watch the SD card contents. Now remember it was 137 megs, right? Now let's go to property. It should be around 16 now. And there it is, 16.6, .6, a huge difference. So get rid of the things that you don't need. Now, you, we told the system, and if you look over here on the OpenTX, we told the system that we were going to put our um, SD card contents, uh, whoops, wrong folder here. SD card contents were gonna be in the folder, uh, XDP or X9D uh, plus dash customer forward slash SD card, right? So that is right here. So if I go to SD customer and then SD card, this is where those contents need to go. So I'm going to take my SD card contents, select all of this, and I'm gonna click cut, and I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna go to my SD card, I'm gonna click paste. And it's gonna move the rest of that 16.6 .6 megs of data here, because when I tell the radio to synchronize, it's gonna now synchronize what it sees here to my radio, right? The only thing I have to tell you though is you need to take this firmware that we downloaded and I would definitely shrink the name down, all right, because there is an issue with older firmware being able to read longer names of the files, longer file names. So we're just gonna rename this just to be careful because if you try to do this and you don't rename it and you can't see the file, then you're gonna have a hard time. So let's just do, um, all we care about is that for us, we know that uh, we are running, uh, what, what the options were that we were running. So I'm just gonna do uh, to about right here, right? And I'm gonna delete this part, and I think that this should be just fine then. So now I'm gonna right click and click Copy, and I'm gonna go to my SD card contents, and in my firmware folder, I'm gonna click Paste. Okay, now you can organize in this folder very well. So let's just say, for example, you did, you named this uh, Radio Firmware, okay? So if you wanted to organize, I keep mine very organized. So if you wanna organize like this, just click Paste, put it right there, okay? I don't think this will cause a problem when we do the bootloader, but we're going to find out, all right? So now that we're done with that, you can also come over here. So you see these two folder options here, and you can see that there is already a folder in here for firmware, okay? Um, most of the time, I'll take this out, uh, the SD card out, 
and um, format it first. I don't think I'm going to be able to format it internally here, but I'm going to give it a shot real quick. I remember there being an option, a problem before, but let me just go ahead and click start, and it may give me an error. It may not. So we're going to see. Okay, the format is complete, so I'm going to click close. Now when I look at that folder, my original card contents are gone. They should be, which is great because I don't really care to keep anything old that's on here. I'm going to rewrite them new. Once I've done that, and everything in the folder is set up the way I want it, and I've got my firmware on there, I'm going to go ahead and click this icon right here and open TX, right? So click it, and um, it's, uh, oops, it should say, let me see, no radio or SD card. Okay, so yeah, what we need to do now is we need to find, let me make sure I show you this real clear. So you see this red line right here, red text, it says no radio or SD card detected. Okay, fine. That's, it's got nothing here. So let's go ahead and click the envelope, and let's go ahead and put it, on select folder. I believe it's going to be E. I think that's what I just formatted. Yeah, E. So let's go ahead and select E and click select folder. And we know it automatically knows that we're going to be going to our downloads, transmitter, XD9. And because we already specified the folder, it's right there. Let's run a test and click OK. So it's going to run a very quick test and tell me what the results would have been. New files copied would have been uh, 343. There were no errors, no skip, no nothing. Okay. So what I want to show you is when we do this again, you have the option here. You can go both directions, radio to folder first. You can pick either way. Because we updated the computer and the radio is formatted, um, it doesn't really matter at this point. But what we want to do is make sure your options here say to copy only if never or different, okay? Um, and then you have the options copy only if different, and can, uh, sorry, not never, newer, and then copy only if newer without the uh, different option. We're gonna select the first one and leave it like that. And um, we're going to do both directions, although you could easily do from local folder to radio folder because we have nothing on the radio folder sent back. I wouldn't do that um, normally because you may put files on here uh, that you did not synchronize to your folder. So you may be somewhere and somebody says, okay, here is my, um, you're at somebody else's location or you got somebody's computer and you do something, you take your radio, your SD card out, you put it in the computer and you update files, whether they're Lua scripts or whatever they may be, and you put them back in. Well, you want those files to go now go back to your computer when you synchronize. So you don't want to just have only from local folder to the radio, right? You want to keep going back and forth, but go with newer and changed, okay? So let's go back to that now and what we have here. And we're going to remove the test option now and click OK. And what we're going to see now is all our information that we had in that folder start copying over. I'm just going to let that run for a minute. And while that is happening, I do want to also go over something else. Oh, wait, you guys didn't see that. Sorry. Let me switch this screen over. Okay, so... What you missed, what I was doing here was, uh, I did, and I'll do it again real quickly because I didn't realize I didn't switch the screen over, sorry. It's kind of, it's five o'clock in the morning or 5.30 in the morning, close to it, so I guess I'm running a little slow here, but um, all I did was do the update again, uh, and um, this time uh, I told, I removed the test button off of it, right? And I'm gonna show you my settings here real quickly, so if you'll just hang tight one second, I will show you this and then we'll get back to the radio. But as you can see right here, it's scrolling through and it's gonna go through all those files that we did test run on, right? So, um, but what it is also doing is it's removed the 120 other megs of files that we aren't gonna need. Uh, the, the Czech, the Russian, the Spanish, the, uh, I think it was Denmark. Uh, so, let me see the countries where we're Czechoslovakia. I think you have Russian, Spanish, whatever. So anyways, you have a bunch of different um, uh, language options. Um, and so this would be the way to go, okay? Uh, and you're gonna have a much smaller SD card because of this. Okay, so we can see now that it's completed and it says right here, and uh, yeah, it says right here that you have 343 new files and then that were, they were updated. Okay, and so we had uh, zero were updated because we had none on the card. We skipped zero because all of them copied over and we had zero errors, so that's perfect. So here is the settings that you would wanna keep. Uh, I did, um, I did, you want to keep on both directions, radio to folder first, or you can go local, uh, both directions, local to local folder first, whichever you want to do. I'm going to go, I always go to radio first because I usually put the files on my computer and then I go to the radio first, okay? 
Um, and then you want to say copy if newer. So it's going to be the first option on the uh, existing files, and it will be the first option on the sync. Excuse me, the sync direction. Now that we're done with that, um, there's nothing. I ran it again, and it says this time there's nothing to copy. Everything's already over, and it goes pretty quickly. So there's that. All right. So we have updated, and let me show you the radio now. So we have updated the. Um, radio as you can see and we still have the old bootloader on here so your updates are not 100% done yet right so here's what you have to do next and there's a couple things I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this uh, but the way I would normally do it is, is as follows so first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to show you the rest of these real quick so we have radio profiles this is what you would click on just kind of like going to settings um, and then here is if you're doing a splash screen difference because obviously you're going to see the price guys splash screen um, but you could always add your own right uh, so this is going to be checking for updates and there are no updates available at this time now this update is for the program and not the radio so please keep that in mind here is where you check for your radio and if you click check updates and there's nothing here to do for updates we've downloaded the firmware we've downloaded the SD card so we're done there we are at the latest build of 2.2.4 and so now what we want to do is I'm going to come over here and I am going to write firmware to radio again uh, and we are going to um, use this one and we're going to check for hardware compatibility and let me make sure that we have everything here that we need. so we're going to write this one because we changed the file name right so we've already done all of this here and so we're going to write it to TX one more time and I want you to see the purpose is to see what goes on and then we're going to eject out of this and close everything down now we have our models over here if you click on your read uh, models uh, from the radio okay you're always going to have this default model here and this is a really good way to set up your models you do it this way is pretty quick also uh, and we can go into all that later, but at this point, we're pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and click file and I'm going to click exit. Okay. And I'm going to close this down. All right. Now let's go and zoom in on the radio itself. So here's our radio now, right? And let's see if we can do it this way. Sorry. Give me one second. Okay. And I've got this racecraft prop just waiting to cut my fingers off. Okay. So now that we're done, um, we're going to go ahead and you can uh, turn off the radio at this point but you will still see your screen here right so what you want to do is you want to go on your computer and I guess I should have left this for you so uh, even though you've got the switch off you still got this you want to now safely eject so go ahead and go to your uh, USB in the bottom corner here and right click and left click on eject and it's gonna move and sometimes you may see the USB icon flap over the way here when you click it again it may shoot to the right so there you go it moved all the way to the right and then go ahead and eject this one all right now you can it's now safely remove the USB cable. There it goes, and now the power's off. Okay, so now let's get back to business over here, right? Okay, so now that we're done, we want to go ahead and um, uh, hold in our, 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 our trims again and turn it on. Let me just do it this way. Okay, and you can see that we have our vert. Now, this is another way to write your firmware. So when you get to the screen and you don't plug in your USB, go ahead and hit uh, scroll down or scroll up. You, I was right in the right spot. Hit enter. And uh, oh, I've got to set this up. My bad. So let me go to exit. Welcome to work at TX. Okay. Now we can start our calibration. This is this is pretty much brand new here. So we're gonna go ahead and start our calibration, and uh, we're going to head and uh, go ahead and move these everywhere. And I wouldn't crank on them. I would just use them like if you fly, like if you're a thumb flyer or a pinch flyer, or whatever you want to do. Go ahead and do your calibration. Set everything back. Go ahead and turn your knobs here. Set everything back. Okay. And then. Uh, these knobs here fully like that and let's see okay so our calibration is going to be done for the time being all right and then we are now at our basic screen now here's where we're going to go and we're going to go to uh going to hold our menu button down and we're going to click page once and you see now our folders that we created here right so these are all the folders let me see if i can zoom in on this so these are all the folders that we created uh earlier on the usb and we're going to go to firmware and hit enter and then we're going to go to our a folder and hit enter and there it is and we're gonna hold that down and we're gonna flash our bootloader so hold that and enter and it's gonna write it and exit exit and now we're gonna turn the radio off okay now when we turn it on we're gonna make sure everything starts up with no errors throttle warning okay switch warning okay okay all right so everything here looks good right um, now what we want to do is to show you where our bootloader changed hold your hold your um, trims in again turn it on and what you can see now is our bootloader is now at 2.2.4 and that is uh and now what one thing that you will 
uh, notice now is that when you click this, you do not get that error again of directory not found because the folder structure in 2.2.4 understands the card structure. In 2.2.1, it doesn't. They changed it a little bit, okay? And so um, when you want to write your bootloader, uh, let me go ahead and just go to exit. When you want to write Welcome your bootloader. Okay. Make sure our switches Local are good. Warning. Okay. Switch warning. Okay. When you want to write it, you just hold down your menu button, press page once, and then you would go to your firmware folder here, and then we created that folder there, and that's where you can load it. And once you load it and you hit enter, you hold the enter key down, flash bootloader, hit enter, and it'll automatically do it for you. Okay. Uh, so that pretty much does it as far as setting the radio up. Now, a couple things you did notice that, and I'll show you again real quickly. You did notice that when I turn this on, we do see Welcome the error. To open TX. Okay, and we have warning. a throttle warning error, uh, and, uh, it's, and we have our switches set. So what we want to do is, if you look and you see, it's saying you SF, right? So SF is this down key here, and it's saying that it needs to be up in order. You can adjust all this as you want, but one thing I do want to show you is when you go to your menu button and you click page, uh, it's telling you that your throttle is not set, right? It's saying that the throttle is not idle, sorry. And so what we want to look at is we want to see where it's reading our throttle, and that's going to be right here. Okay, and um, we want to look and we want to make sure that everything is reading properly. So you will go check and make sure. And that's when I will usually go to calibration and I will recalibrate again, even though we just did it. I like to do it one more time just to make sure all my switches and everything or all my, um, my sticks are fine. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to tell you to center them. So center them. And now just go ahead again and move everything all over the place. Okay, top to bottom, left to right. Okay, and then top to bottom, left to right, and then just go around. Okay, and then we'll turn our sticks here, our dials here, I mean, and we'll do that. Okay, and then we'll do the dials here. Okay, and there we go, and let's hit enter. Okay, and that should pretty much take care of it. You will see everything now is centered properly, everything looks good, and if we go to our page, um, if we hit our menu button and then hit page because we're on our model, and we can go start seeing that we have everything here set up. Now, you need to map your channels accordingly. So if you go to your menu button and you look here, for example, the date's not set, so go ahead and hit enter and just change it. And we're gonna go ahead and up. Now you could do this through the computer, and I didn't, but you're gonna, whoops, let's go ahead and go to uh, month number nine. And then let's go ahead and change it to, I believe today's the 12th, yep. Okay, let's do that. And then let's see, uh, we are good here, default channel order. Uh, this is set for mode one, it needs to be for mode two. Little warning. Oh yes, yes, I know. Okay, calm down a second. All right, so when we do that, now when we drop our throttle, we turn the radio off and we turn it back on. Welcome to Open TX. As you can see, our fail save isn't set, but our throttle warning is now gone because our channels are now set properly. And there you go. Your radio is ready to go. It's fully firmware updated. Everything is good to go on this one. Now you can start doing all your additions for your long range in the back or what have you. Sorry, I know I'm zoomed in a little bit. And <clears throat> so, okay, let me just now do this. So I get, I was kind of long-winded on this one. I was early this morning, but uh, I wanted to get this out because I've got to ship it out today and I wanted to make sure the customer saw it was working great. Um, I will go into a second stage here because one of the things you want to do is, and I, I'm going to touch base, I'm going to kind of briefly go over this real quickly so you can uh, understand here. So when you set up your, um, when you set up your stuff here, you're going to see, if you look at the monitor here, right? Channel one, this is your stick here, uh, and then channel four, and then channel two, or channel three, I mean, and channel two right here. So you've got one, two, three, four, right? But what you don't have is five, six, seven, or eight, which are going to be your switches, right? And we want to have those switches, and you don't have any of these programmed. You have none of the sliders programmed, right? So just very quickly, if you wanted to do something like that, you can either do it through the computer, um, or you can do it like this. So if you hit menu, and here's your model right here, right? So you know that this one's selected. It's got a star beside it, okay? So at that point, what you're going to want to do, let me see if I can zoom in here. So what you're going to want to do here, let's put this here. Okay, so once you know your model is selected and you've got your star beside it, just hit page and you can name this whatever you want. So if you hit enter and you just put, uh, I'm just gonna name it as uh, new. Okay, so when I wanna name it, I scroll to my letter and then if I wanna capital, I just hold the enter key down, it turns into capital. When I let go, it goes to the next letter, right? So N-E and then let's see, just hold it down and get me to the W. 
Uh, okay, so hit enter and then you can hit exit and now it's named, right? So now when you go back, you're gonna see, when you hit menu, you're gonna see your model is now called new, right? So we're here, it's selected because the star of the asterisk is there, so hit page. We've got our menu and you can go through all these later and we'll cover all these in a little bit, but first thing is, flight mode, everything's fine here, our inputs, right? So here's where we start going. We have one through four, but we don't have number five. So I'm gonna make the SA, for example, our arming switch, right? So I'm just gonna show you this because I know my customer is gonna wanna do this. Uh, so now you can make whichever switch you want. Let me zoom out. But I'm making this switch right here. I like a three-way switch for arming because this way I've got two positions that are armed in case I actually bump it from down to the middle. It doesn't turn off. So I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna input the name and I'm gonna call this A. Uh, let me go scroll here to R. And then M. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna hit exit, and I'm gonna go down line name again. Will be arm again. I just I just do it this way. This is this is me. You could do it however you want. It's kind of repetitive at some points, but I cannot um, deviate from what I'm used to. So there's that, right? Okay. So now uh, I'm gonna scroll down. Now your source is gonna be what's what's your switch, right? What do you want to use? Hit enter, and it's gonna start blinking, and then just flip the switch, and there you go. Okay. So it's S A, and as you can see right here, it's S A. So that's it. Now you can hit exit and it'll stop blinking. And everything else you can pretty much leave like it is. So hit exit again. And now you can see that you have an arm switch as your channel five, okay? And you can see up here it says, uh, this is your um, five through 64, okay? So if you look, uh, you can go through a ton of settings here. And then this is your pages. So this is four of 12. I don't know if you see that, but it's four of 12. All right, so we've done five. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna do six. And six is gonna be my, um, uh, fail safe. So I'm just going to hit enter and I'm just going to type fail. And some of these, I cannot remember which ones allow only three letters, but we'll see. <sighs> Let me just, okay, so let's do that and then we'll go down and we'll type it again. It may have been four, I can't remember. I just know that there's one. I think the line name can be longer. Yeah, so we've got fail here and that's gonna be our fail safe switch. Now, for fail safe, I like a three-way switch also. And because I'm only using my arming here and this is this switch over here, this three-way switch will be my mode selector, it's SD. So I know I'm gonna be using this from time to time and I'll be using this at the beginning. I'm gonna put my um, fail safe switch on one of these two right here. And for this purpose, I'm just gonna put it right here. So I'm gonna hit enter, wait for it to start flashing. I'm gonna flip the switch and it automatically does it to SC, okay? That's a three-way switch. And the reason I want three-way is I have up toward, you know, away from me as nothing. I have the middle that I will set for my beeper only in beta flight. And I have the bottom as beeper and fail safe. So if I accidentally bump this one way, I don't kick my uh, quad into fail safe mode, all right? So I'm gonna leave that and now we're good. So we're gonna hit exit. And now we have our arm and our fail safe. And so from there, we're gonna hit page again, and now we've got our mixer. And this is basically gonna tell the quad what switches do what function, right? So we're gonna go to five, and we know five is our arming. So we're gonna go ahead and name it arm. So hit enter, and then find your letters. Okay. And it automatically will associate the channel you're on with the channel input from the screen before. So on here, it automatically knows that you're going to R. So unless you're not going to channel to channel combination, just leave that like it is. You can hit exit there and then you can see. Um, now we don't have to have the trim set on here. I'm not gonna mess with any of it right now because this is pretty much the minimum that you can do to get this working and it will work just like this. So we're gonna hit exit again. And now we're gonna go and we're gonna add our fail safe. So we're gonna hit enter. And we're gonna hit enter again and we're gonna type fail. Okay, and hit exit now because we're done typing. And we're gonna go ahead and it automatically has our switch set here, right? And we're gonna leave everything else the way it is right now. I'm not worried about any of that. Okay, so now we're gonna hit exit and exit. Now, what you're gonna see now is if you flip your switch here, you're gonna see the value move, you see? So you have off the other way, just like that, okay? And if you look at this one, you see how it moves? Okay, now there is one last switch. I meant to do this one too, so this is gonna be for your 
mode selection. I should have done that and I didn't. So we're gonna do, uh, seven will be mode. So we're just gonna really quickly type mode. Okay, and we'll do the same thing again. Because you need to know if you're gonna be in horizon, you're gonna be in acro, acro with air, uh, angle, I mean, you know, you've got a bunch of different options here. Um, and as you add things like LEDs or what have you, you can change the switch functions. So we're gonna do mode, uh, hit exit here, and now go to our source. And I'm gonna use this small one on the, on the right side, which is SD, it's a three-way switch. So I'm gonna say, okay, exit. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit exit again, get out of this screen, now go to the next screen by pressing page. And remember guys, if you go to the forward page, like page five, and you wanna go back to page four, just hold the page button down, it'll go backwards. If you press it quickly, it'll go forward, okay? So instead of having to go through all of it. So let's go ahead and set uh, channel seven, and we're gonna type, uh, we're gonna call it mode to match. Uh, so that should be M. Oh, it's morning time, everybody's waking up, and I know the new Call of Duty season just released yesterday, so my kids are probably trying to reach me to play. In just a little bit, I will. Okay, so there's our mode setting too. Once we're done naming it, we've got everything done. Okay, so there we go. So now if we want to go and, and see if our channel 7 is working, we can highlight that, and you can see it moving here, the values moving. Okay, so that's done. Now what you'll notice is when you, um, if you click page again, now you've got all your inputs. Now, me, I actually label mine. So I would call this throttle. I'm not going to do all these because it's going to drive me nuts. You know, you guys are wasting your time. But I do this because I like to just have everything organized. So, but I think maybe here is where you're only allowed uh, three letters. So let me see. If I put the R, no, I guess not. Maybe that changed. I could have sworn there was a. Okay, I don't know how many letters they. Oh, okay, so one, two, three. And you can do four, five. Okay, so one, two, three. And then I'll just put T and an L. Okay. Okay, so if you want to name your stuff like this, it's just is easier for down the road. Uh, so, you know, and then you know that um, you have uh, five, six, and seven, which would be, I'll do this one only, and this would be arm. So A, uh, R, and then, okay, and then you can just go ahead and name the rest, okay? What is important about this is, and you'll know this, and you'll learn this in beta flight more, is you see how you have a 988 U US here, right? Okay, well, this is the screen that you come to if you've done your calibration. This is a screen you come to where you start uh, changing your, min your mins and max, right? So for throttle, for example, uh, I don't need to do this. I need to go over to the next one. So sub trim, that's gonna be the middle area, right? So when I put this in the middle, I need this to be reading about 1500 and you'll know in beta flight, you, you know where your middle is. Uh, here, because it doesn't lock in the middle and stay like this side does, uh, the middle is kind of subjective to whatever you want it to be. Okay, but we do know that the minimum is 988 and we like it to read a thousand so we're going to go ahead and while this is pressed down we're going to go ahead and we're going to press the up we're going to click on the min here and we're going to go up till it says a thousand our adjustment is now 97.8 and now we're going to go to the maximum and it needs to be 2000 so we're going to move our arrow to the maximum section and we are going to now drop it down to where it says 2000 and the reason i'll show you this here in just a second is that's the throttle input right so check out the rest of them. You see how when they are in the center, they read 1500. So there is a setting here. Everything in Betaflight is going to ask you where you're at with this. If you see a uh, jumping number like this, you can either A, go into your sub trim setting and adjust it, or you can just give yourself a little uh, movement in Betaflight, like a little dead zone there. Uh, but anyways, so just looking at this, just because we did the throttle, now we need to see what our minimum is here. So here, we're, we know our minimum is 988, it needs to be 1000, so we're gonna go ahead and click enter. And we can try to mimic what we have up here, and it should get us close. So I'm just gonna do that without holding the stick down and see how close it is if I copy it. And there it is, 1000, so just go ahead and you'll see it's 2009 now. So you can go ahead oops, and copy it, and then see how close you are. Okay, and this is good. Okay, so I'm gonna go up, there we go. 
So I'll leave it right around 2,000. That's exactly the same, okay? So we have 1,500 is our center, 1,000 is our min, 2,000 is our max, and then if you look at the throttle, we're gonna see, so you will do this for the next two. Um, I guess I will do it for my customer. So let me just go ahead and click exit, and we'll go down here, uh, hit enter, and scroll in. So we are gonna be looking at our sub trim, and it looks good. So now our min, uh, we're gonna do the same thing. So let's go ahead and go 97.8. Okay. And we are going to go to our max. And we are going to bring that to 97.8. And if we check that, we're at 2,000. Okay, so let's just go to our last one. And we'll do the same thing. We're just going to assume that that's where it needs to be. I mean, by, by pattern, it looks like it, so I doubt that it's any different. Okay, and then for our max. Okay, so now if I check this, max is 2,000, min is 1,000, and we're, so this is perfect, all right? Now, if you wanted to name the rest of these, you know, like I said, this is going to be, um, uh, this is your fail, so... And these max and mins really don't matter because Betaflight will give you a range there uh, to set yours to. So let me just go JKL. Okay, and then we'll click exit and then exit. And then we'll go here. And this was mode. I guess I ended up doing it anyway, didn't I? So M. It's hard to read this from here because it's sitting at an angle. M O D E. There you go. Okay, so, and then you'll see, like, if I flip this, you'll see the rating, but I don't care about this because this has nothing to do with my flight or sensitivity or anything, so I'm not worried. All I care about are these ones right here, okay? So once I'm done with that, I can hit exit, and uh, then I think I'm now to where I can go, okay, curves we're not going to mess with today, global variables, nothing, logical switches, nothing right now, uh, special functions, still the same thing, and then telemetry. We'll go over all those later, but um, there you go. So everything is now set up. And that is step one, basically. Now, what we're gonna do real quickly, and I wasn't planning on doing this, so you can stop the video if you want. I know it's been long-winded, but I really feel like I need to show you this uh, for those people that wanna see it. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and plug this back in um, and, uh, and show you what it looks like now in um, uh, OpenTX, right? Because you wanna have this back up in all these settings now back up to your computer in case you ever wanna reload it or do something like that. So let me show you how that's gonna work, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to turn the radio off. We're going to hold our trims in like we normally do when we're going to put this in DFU mode. right? And we're going to go ahead and put in our USB. Oh, oops, I didn't do that right. I apologize. Hold on. I plugged in without turning it on. My bad. Okay, so let's flip it up real quick. And you'll see that we are at our, our uh, section here to plug in the USB. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And let me go ahead and put something underneath this now so I can not have it sit on the USB cable. And there you go. All right. So now let's go ahead and open OpenTX. <clears throat> okay now what i want to do is here's the model from the radio so this option here says read the models and from the radio so i'm going to click that and it's going to read now the new model you see it right here right so from here we can double click on this and we can see all the settings we just did so <clears throat> we name the model new and you know what i'm just going to change it to um new uh model right this way you'll see that it takes over you can add an image if you want um, this has all the information that we had earlier, uh, and we'll go over a lot of this later, but for right now, uh, flight modes we're not touching, everything is centered and looks good, none of these trims have been uh, adjusted, um, and we can just call this uh, default if you want, it's up to you. Alright, you have different flight modes here to adjust how you want. Inputs, you can see now where we've created this, and if you want to do this in OpenTX, just you can always double click and set your settings here, it's the same thing, but we've already done it. Um, and then we have our mixes, which is the other thing that we did. So now, uh, if you wanted to type your names here, it would be easier. And I think I realized here that I just named, no, no, it's M, is that an O? Yeah, it is. I don't know why it looks like an N right here, but it is an O. So I don't know, this looks really weird right here. But anyways, uh, outputs. So you can see where I named this here and you can see all the adjustments that we did to keep everything uh, centered, right? Uh, and 1000, 2000, and so forth. Um, and then we have our curves we're not touching, logical switches and so forth and telemetry, okay? So once we're done with this, um, we can go and we can click uh, save. 
And what I'm going to do here is there's a models folder. Uh, that's actually, this is not yours. This is, I keep a models folder in mine. We go to transmitters, and then you can go to your um, uh, SD card, and you can make here in your models folder, just go ahead and put today's date. So it'll be 091219, right? Uh, dash models. Let's just do that, and we'll click save, okay? So now we've got a backup of the models in case we want to restore or do whatever with it. Uh, and we can um, go to our settings now, and we can, or you can just come over here, right? And we're going to see everything that we did. Everything here looks good. Application settings, everything else looks good. So we know we've got that saved. And what we want to do now is, let me see, we want to, uh, I think, we want to back up the radio to a file. So let's go ahead and make our backup. So we're going to click this, and we've already designated our backup folder. So we're going to go to our... Uh, the customer thing and here's our backup and we are going to call this um, uh, 091211 BK okay so let's just do that and it's going to automatically back everything up for us that we want and you will see now in your contents folder here uh, if you go to your downloads and you go to your transmitter well, you have your own folder but if you go to your backup there's your backup okay now you could always put this inside the um, folders on your SD card but I'm leaving it like this because I'll use my computer for it outside of that it pretty much does it uh, your quad is now set up properly. Uh, and I think if I close this down, I don't think we're doing any simulation right now or anything else. I think that's pretty much it that I want to show you from here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing else uh, to show you except, nope, that's it. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and exit. Okay, and we'll close this down and we will get back to our radio here and we will do our safe eject. So don't forget that, right? So pick one and then eject it and then the SD card icon moves over to here for some reason and then we're going to go ahead and do it again. Okay, now we can pull the USB out. We will go back to our main screen, scroll down to exit, and Welcome we will have everything done. Switch warning. Okay, now the switches that it's talking about is going to be the one in the back. Um, I'm going to probably, I don't use this switch in this direction. I use it the other way, so I'm going to reverse that and I'll show you how to do that later. And your fail safe isn't set, which you can do later, but there you go. That's it, guys. So um, you have everything set that you wanted. I did not. I did change this to new model, but I didn't write it back. So that's why you're not seeing it on here. Uh, my apologies. I meant to write it back to the radio, but I didn't. Um, okay. Long video, about 48 minutes. It's early. It was early in the morning. It was dark outside. Now it's lighter. But I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. And if I missed something or made an error on something, please hit me up and let me know. Um, also, if you wouldn't mind supporting us by just well, clicking these buttons right here that you can. Is that how I do it? Yeah, Mike, right there. Uh, follow us subscribe to us whatever that is and then uh, like us and then email me right yeah is that yeah whatever anyways all right guys uh, god bless hope you have a safe flying enjoy and if you need anything hit me up at target site like 1fpv.com sorry for the long wind and this is what happens when I do videos at 5 in the morning peace bye